here's the thing about breaking into comics. I believe that how I broke in, that door may have been closed. Last year, I filmed my entire process for the fourth issue of Clear. I was seeking answers for questions I had about my own artistic journey. This is a work in progress. A true behind the scenes look at how comic books are made. So I think yesterday went about as well as I could have hoped for being able to pencil ink and color a single page all in one day. I think that's pretty good. Now, today's gonna be a little bit different because I'm primarily gonna be focusing on penciling an entire sequence. I'm only gonna show you guys parts of it because, you know, spoilers. Even though I'm used to batching each element and, you know, doing pencil, 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 ink, 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 color, 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 you get the idea. Today requires quite a lot of choreography on my part because it is an action sequence. That is what's on deck for today's deadline extravaganza. Even though the whole point of this video project is to show you behind the scenes of what it's like to have a hellish deadline, mind you, it is a hellish deadline of my own doing, I figured this is a job that I would not trade for anything else in the world and perhaps it might be an industry that you may want to break into. There's actually many more doors in today's comic book industry for you to break into. And I'm gonna show you some of those entrances that you can slip inside to. A little bit of history of how I broke into comic books. Uh, essentially, when I was in high school, I met a bunch of other artists and writers and we were all trying to break in. So we would travel to conventions and showing our portfolio to editors and publishers, anybody who was a potential employer that would allow us to do our art or our writing. And at some point we started working on projects together in order to have stuff published. Even though it was for free, it was just something that helped establish us as artists who could complete a project. Finishing is a really big deal. You know, the thing is, is that having a small sample of someone's artwork is great, but publishers and editors really want to see you complete something. Now, therein lies the paradox of breaking into comics, the whole concept of nobody wants to hire you unless you have experience. So, Knowing this, my friends and I, like I said, we started working on stuff together just to have that experience under our belt and be able to say, we finished this project. And I started showing my portfolio pieces around, coinciding with these books that I've had published. Through the convention circuit, my artwork eventually landed at the offices of Top Cow. They needed a last minute job, and that job established my connection to the people over at Top Cow, which eventually led me to getting a contract. Now, how I got to DC was essentially establishing myself at Top Cow, and then I got to DC. So that's the long and short of it. I don't know if that's how artists these days are going to break in. But I believe there are many more cracks in this bunker that at times feels impenetrable. And I'm gonna discuss with you how I believe you're gonna break in in today's comic book market. So here are some of the options that I believe that you have in order to break into comic books. The first one being create an online portfolio. Now, whether it's creating a website with your artwork on it or starting uh, an Instagram account primarily focused on your artwork, I believe that a lot of editors these days are usually on Instagram or other forms of social media and they're not particularly looking per se, but they will stumble onto your artwork at some point. If you're doing really good work and noteworthy work that people are starting to notice, I believe that they'll find you. 
in the same way that like I know that when I'm on Instagram and I go through that kind of random search area, I'm always finding amazing artists whose work I wasn't aware of before. And I imagine that editors are doing the same thing, not to look for artists, but kind of people in this industry are fans of comic books. And they're kind of by virtue fans of artists and and writers. And if you put your work on social media and you are consistent with it and you do good work, I believe that they will find you. So what goes in a portfolio? Sorry, real quick, there's construction going on outside. Hopefully it's not gonna be too disruptive. What goes in a portfolio? One of the methods that I use, and I used it pretty much all the time, I like to call it the three by three method. I don't know if other people use this. It's, it was kind of just something that I stumbled into. So it's kind of a phrase I'm making up, but the three by three sequence essentially consists of three portfolio pieces and each one contains three pages. Now, within those three pages are all the elements that I believe editors are looking for when it comes to hiring an artist. Page one consists of me setting up the stakes, setting up the scene, kind of creating and drawing a regular world, a regular environment that we're all accustomed to. Because in comics, it's really important that you know how to draw everything from cars to people to regular street scenes. So typically I'll open up page one with a very simple sequence of the setting, setting up the scene. And I'll usually end page one with the character kind of looking behind them because there's a looming danger about to descend upon them. So it kind of entices the editor to flip through to the next page. Now page two will usually consist of revealing what this danger is. My primary focus for page two is showing my ability to create tension through my, my storytelling. So page two will usually have a sequence where the pedestrian character that I introduced in page one, the danger is now descending upon them, whether it's a car about to fall on them or Galactus's foot about to step on them. It essentially ends on a cliffhanger page two where Whereas page one focuses on potential and hinting of danger, page two always ends with immediate danger. Page three is where I have, it's where I get to kind of show off. And typically it'll be somewhat of a half splash page revealing the heroes who just saved the day. I remember one of the things I used for DC was Green Lantern kind of using his ring to stop a car from falling on on these kids. And it's essentially your chance to show, it's your chance to show off. This is where you're hitting the high note. Now, I did this three times, one for Marvel, one for DC. And I think at the time I did one for Wildstorm as well. And I kind of started calling it the three by three sequence because there's enough there. I think most of the time with within just a couple pages, an editor can tell whether you're ready. And the only thing they're kind of hesitant on is your ability to finish because these are just a small samplings of what you can do. But if you do these three things really well, I think it will at least establish a huge interest on the editor's part of taking a risk on you. So that's a three by three method where it consists of three portfolio pieces from different companies, 
with each sequence being three pages and just make sure to hit those three marks because doing those three types of pages and those three different elements will allow you to show off your ability not just to draw but to also tell a coherent and a clear story. Another option that I believe is in your arsenal that wasn't something that was feasible to me when I was breaking in. There are now multiple platforms that will allow you to digitally publish your creator-owned books. And most of them are, are free, but you have the ability to potentially monetize if it gets popular enough, whether it's Tapas or Webtoons or other comic book websites. There's just so many. And in some ways, I believe that you can reach an even wider and more international audience that way. And one of the benefits of doing that is it allows a potential employer or publisher to see that you have the ability to tell a story, you have the ability to see something through from the beginning to the end. And that's kind of the real key here is your ability to tell stories, your ability to follow through, your ability to finish. You'd be surprised how many artists whose portfolio knocks the socks off of editors, but once they get that first job, that first job is so crucial and they mess it up. They mess it up because they're unprepared for the rigors of creating a 20 or 22 page comic don't even get me started on 30 page comics. One of my first big projects that got me a regular gig was working on, I believe like a 38 page comic. And while I was working on that book, I think it was the Witchblade Magdalena crossover. While I was working on that book, I held down my job because I was afraid of not having any income coming in. And, you know, I wanted to continue to be a helpful contributor to my family and at the time my mom uh, we had just rented this house and it was the first time we had the entire house to ourselves and I knew that I needed to step up uh, and help financially in order to rent this house oh I gotta be right back So once you start publishing your work through these digital mediums or even photocopying them and, and going to conventions. Now, here's a caveat to conventions, especially when you're just starting out and you may not have a lot of funds. It is pretty pricey to do conventions, especially with all the material that you want to publish in order to showcase at these conventions. But the the hope and the plan is for these conventions is that you make that money back through selling your your prints or your books and the cool thing about that is that editors definitely do walk around artist alley and if you have a print or a comic book that shows your ability to kind of i want to say compete at a professional level but that's not quite the right word but Essentially, if you're, it's, 
it sounds weird to say, but conventions almost feel like a, a real life version of what I was trying to imply of you starting to post your portfolio on social media and websites. And it's essentially when you do the work, it makes it discoverable. If you don't do the work, you're just, it's just sitting in your drawer and nobody has the ability to find you. All of these things that I told you about is going to make breaking into comic books, this, this place that feels like an impenetrable bunker, much more achievable. Hopefully what I presented you with gives you a lot of motivation in realizing how wide open it actually is. And even if nobody wants to give you a shot on their books, you take that shot. You make your own stuff. You make them come to you. At the end of the day, you just need to tell good stories and you just need to be consistent and you need to be good. What if the simplest tasks you're already doing has the potential to be more powerful than your inspirations? Because when they fade, and trust me, they will, and the winds depart just as quickly as they came, you'll have to look from within to push you through the winter of creativity.